Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Raptor Dad Gaming and in this video we're going to talk about the brand new Grinelli Design and Beehoo F22 Raptor. This is the ultimate Raptor that we've been waiting for. It has thrust vectoring, destruction of enemy air defense capabilities, and is just all around fun. Let's get started. First, we'll talk about known issues, which honestly there's only one, and it's really not that bad. There's a side flip anytime you start to bank the aircraft, as well as if you turn very hard. It's completely normal for an aircraft with thrust vectoring, so it takes some getting used to. Basically, the aircraft kind of drifts through the sky a little bit, and you'll notice that it has a bit of residual yaw at the end of each maneuver. The team is aware of this and are working to rectify it with the next update. Note, the effect will not be completely eliminated as it's just a nature of the aircraft's flight model. So the effect will be reduced, but not completely eliminated. Next. We'll talk about some of the new capabilities, first being thrust vectoring use in combat. In combat situations, you want to use thrust vectoring sparingly. Pull too much and you'll be a sitting duck as you won't have enough energy to continue to turn with your target. With merging with multiple targets, you want to merge between 400 and 475 knots. This will afford you the opportunity to stay fast, defend other targets trying to get behind you, as well as have enough nose authority to pull a target into your HUD and get the gun kill. When merging with a single target, try to be between 350 and 400 knots. This will afford you to maximum deflection for thrust vectoring and be able to get the nose around very quickly. Additionally, if you have a missile, make sure you use vertical scan mode to help you acquire the target a little bit faster and get that 9x shot. Next, we'll go over air to ground operations as well as common issues I've seen in the Discord channel. So first, for air to ground operations, make sure you select the Mako anti-radiation missile. Essentially, it operates like a harm and is super easy. Basically, you point it at the target and you fire. The missile itself does the rest. For JDAMs, you can see here towards the bottom, essentially you'll have to dummy drop them. You cannot input coordinates or use them the standard way that you currently will with other modules. There's no pipper or anything else with them, so you're really dropping blind with them. If you find that your external lights are on and want to turn them off, the keybind for them doesn't work at the moment. So, in the cockpit, you have to look to your left side and you'll see this button here. Left click it until it's in the off position, and then you'll see your external lights have been turned off. Next, we get set up for combat. I like to have my RWR on the right hand side. Turn the master arm to on, go into beyond visual range mode, press the switch weapons button, looking for X4X on our HUD symbology. From here we wait until we see the SAM radar on our RWR. There it is. Press and hold the weapons release button for a few seconds, and there goes the Mako. And then you sit back and watch the fireworks. Boom! It's that easy. I found that the further distance is better because sometimes the missiles will track straight into the ground if they're too close. Additionally, if there's a fighter in the path of the emitter, the missile might track for it instead of the surface-to-air missile radar. Lastly, strafing. Press the C key to bring up the cannon, then press 7 for the air-to-ground mode. The air-to-ground sight is a new addition to the Raptor and is extremely beneficial especially against lightly armored targets, such as SAM emitters. Almost overlooked the biggest issue, which is spawning in the Raptor itself. Make sure you own either the F-15 or the FC-3 pack from the official Eagle Dynamics website. Once you purchase it, make sure you add the F-15C into your respective mission. Make sure you turn it into a client and from there, load the mission. Select the F-15C first, just like that, and then immediately switch into the F-22 slot. You only have to do this once per DCS session, so you can fly the F-22 without loading the F-15 until you close DCS. There's a standalone version in the works that will have sensor fusion and many more features. We don't know when it'll be completed, but I'll make another video to go over the new features. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Wrapped it out. Thanks for watching.